All right, welcome back. Let's begin our discussions now. Uh, let me introduce my guest. Tokbe Fashua, the CEO of Global Analytics, is joining me here again. Do Tokbe, good morning. Good morning. To and you, good to, <laughs> nice to see, see you this you. morning. Thank you very much. The, the, last, the, the last time was when you sent me an email. What were we discussing oh, about? Yeah, was okay, it? That was Capital Markets. Uh, yes, before. Palava. Yes, 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 yes. But how are you, though? Not bad at all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Joining me for the first time is. Um, Okoye Arinze, the director at Marines Nigeria. Good morning to you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And welcome to the program. I just saw your face at the consultative forum also. You were yeah. trying to say something, but we'll come to that a bit later. I think uh, we'll, we'll, the discussion this morning is 2013 budget, which I, I started yesterday. I had two guests and, and, and they, uh, they opened up their minds as it concerns 2013. 13 budget. Let me start from Mr. Fashua. Do you think that we're getting this right now? Because uh, when uh, the minister was being, minister of finance was being screened at the National Assembly, she, she actually said at that time that she would like or she will work for the budget process to still be from January to December. And she actually said even within earlier this year that that was after the passage of this 2012 budget, that there will be a deadline of September 30th for us to prepare 2013 budget. Do you think that right now the, the executive is getting it right? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to say. It's uh, tough to call for now. Uh, but of course, if they've had this first meeting, um, or rather a, a kind of, um, a kind of um, open uh, discussion, which they invited all the stakeholders to, and we're talking of, uh, we're, we're in July as yet, that means at least they're working towards uh, achieving that kind of January to December you know, but then again, uh, uh, the, the reality is that, um, of course, the, the, the 2012 budget perhaps has only just started a few weeks ago in terms of the disbursements, uh, the ability of ministries, uh, the, uh, you know, MDAs as they call them, to, to spend. So that has just started a few weeks ago. And of course, you know that by December, uh, at some point in December, they're going to ask them to return funds to the, you know, whatever you've not spent. So <laughs> at times. And then, of course, that leads to a scenario where before that happens, you see a lot of them trying to quickly spend a lot of money. And therefore, there'll be inefficiencies, there'll be corruption towards that point in time uh, before they blow the whistle and re return the money. Uh, of course, but it's something that's worthy of, uh, of, of, of aspiring to having a proper scenario, which we used to have in this country before, at least a few decades ago, whereby we actually know on the 1st of January, the budget is read and it starts to work. However, maybe that was during the, a lot of that was during the, I mean, military the military era. era. Mm. Uh, but then again, that brings up a question. If you go through, um, I was going through this year's budget, the, the, the pamphlet that they, uh, that they, I think, uh, they, they must have uh, shared in that open consultative forum. And I realized that uh, there are some underlying issues that affect our budget, as it were, which uh, kind of salient issues. There's a whole lot of politics inside that budget. There's a whole lot of competition inside that budget. Um, politics in the sense that, of course, we're spending quite a bit of money to, to sustain the political process, the democracy that we have. Maybe the allocations we have to the National Assembly, to this, to that, and all that stuff. Uh, there's also a whole lot of lawyering going on. There's a lot of legalisms. There are a lot of things that cannot be changed because there's some acts that need to be amended, and it takes perhaps forever. And whereas we know that we need to make this change, we have to go through a whole long process and perhaps we may never get there in order to change the things that we need to change like yesterday. So uh, that's part of the problem. Th that therefore, uh, the best laid plans of government may not be achievable very quickly. That uh, whereas you have started this process in July and you want everything to be submitted by September, by the time the legalism, I mean there's so much lawyering in this country, it's unbelievable. By the time people begin to throw up the issues, as time goes on, we may find ourselves in this same scenario by next year. Or perhaps, maybe what we should do is to say, um, rather than commence implementation of budget by June next year, maybe uh, find the way we are running is about aiming for the skies and finding yourself among the stars. Perhaps if we could commence by, by March next year, it may not be a bad idea. So, but there's a whole lot of politics, a whole lot of competition So with what you just said, you're saying it may not be achievable. Um, it may not be achievable because of the issues that may likely come up. For example, what makes the budget delay? 
between before it goes between the, the House of Representatives to the Senate, then they have to sit together and harmonize. Then the president says, No, you guys have tampered with these, and they say, No, we've put our own interest in that. You know, that's what that's what the problems are. And, and time ticks and waits for no man. Uh, of course, this has happened this year since the return of civilian regime, it has always been an issue. And this, which brings me to the reason why I, uh, the, the key message I need to pass across. The underlying philosophy of our budget so far, and increasingly so, the underlying philosophy of our budget is um, a certain unnecessary competition amongst ourselves. The underlying philosophy is that we are not building the kind of unity and the unity of purpose amongst ourselves as Nigerians. Most states go in you know, trying to grab as much as they can. Every ministry tries to grab as much as they can. We are not even sure exactly where we should prioritize and what we should be funding. This has led to a scenario of unhealthy competition, of corruption, of insecurity, and so on and so forth. And that's where we are today. I'll say that Nigeria has a fantastic future if only we can allow it to survive this year or maybe this day, 2015, as the case may be. A fantastic future, but the way we are pulling the country in different directions. So when you look at Nigeria's budget, for example, the inordinate amount of money being spent on security, for example, the security vote this year is three times what we're spending on education, twice what we're spending on works or more than that. In fact, if you add education, works, and health, and all that, it's not enough, it's not up to what we're spending for security. And therefore, we may be looking at even more allocations in this area because we have serious issues. But okay. the point then is that there's a role for government definitely in continually, this has to go beyond just, just, just speaking about the issue of unity. We're not building that unity from bottom up. And then from top down, we've heard the many statements from government functionaries and people who are even out of government that, that in, 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 inflame hunger in society and look at where we are today. And therefore, I'm even saying that those of us who are outside government must take the initiative to continue to build unity in this country. If we had unity, then we will not be talking about the kind of spendings that we're spending in different directions today. Okay, l l l let me, let me um, uh, hold you on that. Just hold your thoughts and hold. You, you were at the venue. I was. You were, you were at the meeting. What was your perception? When you left there, how did you feel after the minister had spoken, uh, Dr. Pai Brightokoku has spoken, what did you live with? Yes, uh, I was reasonably fulfilled at the end of that session. It was a stakeholder session where, of course, he had mentioned the people that actually came for that uh, session. Um, let me begin by saying, well, uh, to a very large extent, I think we are beginning to get issues right in the sense that the Minister of Finance uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Konji Wala and the coordinating minister indeed, coordinating the entire economy. I think she's one person to be trusted because she has seen it virtually all. At the level she had operated even, uh, you know, and eventually came here, she has seen it at all levels of government. And one of the key features of the recent budget, which is a little, which is reasonably a departure, which has a reasonable departure from what we have in the, what we were having in the past is, when the budget, we are beginning to go away from, you know, strict adherence to this annual ritual of having 12-month calendar budgeting. And most of the things we are budgeting, if mostly, if we are anchoring our budget or if we are premising it on, on an annual basis, that is, the re recurrent things, of course, it could, it could be okay to anchor them like that. But now, we are talking on medium-term budgeting framework, which covers which takes care of the fear he knows of rolling back this money at the end of every year. Why do you have to roll it on when the budget is still continuing? And of course, the minister tried to explain that the, 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 you know, the, the, the spirit of the main spirit behind the, you know, the 2030 budget will run more, more largely to 2015 when the administration's tenure is supposedly to end. Now, let us look at issues involved in that budget. Number one, you have talked of why we, what are the things we expect in the face of the 2013 budget? We are talking of salary. Do we retrench or don't we retrench? We don't have to retrench. I said so. Why? We already, our system, well, the country is already charged. 
are we going to invest more money in security? No. The issues he raised about security, of course, we met a situation we didn't expect. So ordinarily, one should expect that the security budget should be high and perhaps increase for, you know, beyond the 2013 budget to a certain point where we will reasonably get our security, you know, uh, priorities right, Priori you know, our security challenges right. Now, in the 2013 budget, the first thing you ask yourself is, if we are going to, if, since we are not going to retrench, and we are reasonably thinking, the popular opinion is that let us not retrench. But how do we reduce cost in personnel cost? I had suggested, among other things, that one of the ways we will tackle that idea is that, one, if you watch all the MDAs, and for, in fact, some of the people who spoke at that workshop indeed also you know, spoke uh, um, uh, towards the issues I raised. How do you imagine that we are talking of not having money to fund education across the country? School children stay on mango, under mango trees to read. And then all our MDAs, you see, on daily basis, people are buying SUV cars. All sorts of state-of-the-art cars have been bought by, to be used by our, uh, you know, uh, MDA chief executives, the directors and all that. This is tragic. I am challenging in the 2000 and budget the president himself, Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, anything that has to do with any form of vehicle should not find itself in our 2013 budget. Anything vehicle. We have more than any. In fact, we have more, in fact, if you, you we, 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 the current, you know, um, we call them pool of vehicles we have, if we reduce it to between, if we bring it to about 40% to, to carry us on, 